So just to start off, obviously uh, we had a pretty wild few days this past weekend, starting with Friday and then Mayor Walsh officially coming out to oppose Starbucks, so we were happy for that result as a council and I'm sure the community as well. Um, since that time, they're still going through the process with charter in terms of how to, uh, it seems to uh, officially withdraw, uh, withdraw, excuse me, from their uh, the process. However, they haven't done so already. Uh, the latest news today, I spoke to their attorney, Dan Toscano, who I'm sure I'll talk to at the Abutters meeting, um, who has informed me that in, in light of uh, these past few days, they've uh, decided to take both uh, Citizens Bank and Starbucks from the agenda tonight and defer it indefinitely. Uh, so until they come up with uh, an official withdrawal from their plans or their intentions to go there or something else or something changes, uh, that's how it's going to stand um, tonight. So we're not going to, we don't have to vote on the issue as it's deferred. Uh, oftentimes when something like this happens and the plans that they present to us aren't finalized, this is done. So this is normal business for something uh, like this, but I can say that uh, as a council, we still be diligent in pursuing this and making sure that we are up to date with everything as it transpires uh, within the next uh, coming weeks. Uh, so with that said, we can certainly talk about it as it comes to the agenda. We have up another item today, tonight, but I just want to get that out front because I, I know a lot of you are here in that regard. So um, if anybody wants to leave or wants to ask questions now, I'll certainly entertain them. Um, but if not, we'll go on with our regular agenda items. All right, then uh, I will turn to uh, Maria Lanza for uh, Mayor's Report. Hi, everybody. Maria Lanza, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Just a couple of updates from my office. Um, in the press and news releases this week, Mayor Walsh, his fiscal year 2019 budget has been unanimously approved by the City Council. Um, in this budget, uh, $3.29 billion recommended budget which um, has funding for city services, streets, parks, public health, public safety, will grow by $43 million for from fiscal year 18. So lots of new money coming into the neighborhood projects like you guys have heard from Poplar Park, Prado Restorations, and uh, the Nazaro Center Community Study as we stand. So look forward to more processes on those. Also, last week, the parking ticket fines <clears throat> had increased starting on Monday, July 2nd. Uh, some of these regulations increased included no more towing for overnight street cleaning. It will now be a flat ticket rate instead of a tow, although daytime street sweeping will still be towed, but that is something that we're looking forward to in the future. Um, resident parking fines have increased from $40 to $60. Loading zones have increased from $55 to $90, and no stopping or standing zones have been increased from $75 to $95. The full list is on the Transportation Department's website. Please go to boston.gov slash transportation. I know Matt Conti also posted them on his website too. Um, a couple of citywide initiatives we're working on. The civic engagement ceremony nominations are open now. So Love Your Block, which is the annual spring cleanup that we do, as well as the total um, reconstruction and revamp of Boston Shines. They are putting on their second annual civic engagement ceremony, so nominations to nominate local groups in five categories, considering the Community Garden Award, the Vacant Lot Revitalization Award, the Public Stewardship Award, and the Public Art and Beautification Award, and the Community Vanguard Award are all open for nomination. To nominate someone, you can visit boston.gov slash loveyourblock and you'll go through a Google form. So please, I encourage North End Waterfront residents to you know, look around at different art projects and different things going on in the neighborhood and definitely get some nominations in for the Love Your Block ceremony that'll happen this November. Um, also, the Mayor's Coffee Hour that was rescheduled due to rain has, is next Tuesday, July 17th. That's at 9.30 at Christopher Columbus Park. So we're hoping for good weather, hoping to see everybody in here. Now we've had another couple of weeks to crowd build, so definitely come out and receive a free plant, some breakfast and some coffee, and get to talk to the mayor. He's looking forward to seeing a lot of faces in this room as well. Um, and what, a couple other city-sponsored meetings and events. We do have the Boston Parks Department does a summer fitness series for the North End, so these will be free fitness classes in the neighborhood parks. These are all at Christopher Columbus Park on Commercial Street. The classes will be running from June 4th to September 29th, and everyone is welcome at these classes, no matter what fitness level you are. Uh, the classes are Zumba, Monday nights at 6 p.m., 
gentle yoga Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. and boot camp Fridays at 6.30 a.m. all at Christopher Columbus Park. So please feel free to take advantage. There's also a full schedule at bphc.org slash summer fitness for all the parks in the city and the different programs that are available. And with that, I mean, John touched on obviously what happened last week, so I just want to read the mayor's statement regarding the Starbucks issue. So after hearing concerns from the residents about sustaining the culture and historic nature of the North End, I encourage the applicant to withdraw the proposal to locate a Starbucks at the entrance to the North End, said Mayor Walsh. Our community process works best when we communicate effectively and work together. Representative Aaron Mikeowitz and I want to thank everybody who vocalized their concerns and feedbacks within this process. As John said, um, they've formally, not formally withdrawn, but they have deferred indefinitely. So I will not be scheduling any Zoning Board of Appeals dates or any licensing dates for this proposal until they've decided to go back to the drawing board, until they come back to us with either a new proposal or a new tenant. So that's all we know so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 I'd also like to take this opportunity and thank you for the abutters meeting. She ran a, a long meeting, a passionate one, and you did a hell of a job. So thank you for doing that, Maria. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Don't clap until the end. It's on my meeting this time. You can do it. Um, I'd also like to recognize uh, Luigi Natale from uh, Joe Bonquari, Senator Joe Bonquari's office. And the else here that I'm going to say. All right, great. Um, so just in terms of the committee reports, uh, we had assignments with the new council year, so I will, um, you might notice on your agenda that public safety is empty, and that's because uh, it wasn't assigned until tonight. Pat Bova will be handling that for us. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll be continuing the Greenway until uh, my term ends, at which time uh, Carmine will take over that capacity. Um, and then um, we have resident and parking, uh, resident parking and traffic committee that will be headed by Jody Fowler. And then the other two that we have already assigned were Harborfront Neighborhood Alliance and our rough liaison. Uh, so I'll start with the first one, Harborfront Neighborhood Alliance, in terms of the breadth. Hi everyone, so um, just to give you an update, nothing's really happened with the Harborfront Neighborhood Alliance yet. Um, it's still fairly new. Um, what it is, it's a concerted effort between all waterfront neighborhood associations. Um, so between us, Charlestown, South Boston, um, i trying to think what else, Fort Point, uh, East Boston, a lot of waterfront properties, just making sure uh, we coordinate with uh, the Boston Harbor now. Um, and it's pretty much just making sure that there's, that everyone in our neighborhood has access to uh, the waterfront space, the public waterfront space underneath Chapter 91. Um, our last meeting, we got to meet with uh, Conservation Law Foundation and go over how to preserve our waterfront and make sure that the public will always have access to the waterfront um, and some of the legislation going on in that. Um, pretty much just all the communities working together to make sure water transportation is coming full circle, uh, making sure that all these initiatives to make sure, especially with the Charlestown Bridge construction that's going to be starting, they can make life a little difficult. Um, <laughs> to just kind of work together to see how we, between multiple neighborhood associations, could come together and uh, strategize to make a better uh, waterfront community connection with each other. So yeah, like I said, it's still very, very new, so when more updates come about, I'd love to share with you guys. Does anyone have any questions about Harbor from New Orleans? Again, it's you know it's just established in the last few months, and I think the idea is to keep up uh, open line of communication between groups that all board the water, of which of course we're one. So thank you for doing that. Uh, and then I believe Ashley said you had a rough update yeah. for us. Thank you. So I have an update for rough. Uh, there's been, been some issues with park safety. If you've all heard about it, what happened last last week during the fourth? Uh, some kids tampered with the electrical box and the, and the entire gassy and it cut, cut off the electric for the entire, uh, the entire gassy, like I said. So there was also several kids in there breaking bottles, uh, yelling loudly, setting off fireworks. So we please just ask you to just be aware of what's going on in that area. If you see something, say something. And if you are bringing your dog to the park, uh, make sure you're locking the gate behind you. Um, it's at the end of the night. Just, just be aware of the, the park hours and that the gates are locked when, when you're leaving. Uh, otherwise, it's a security issue. Uh, there's still issues with uh, dog owners picking up, not picking up their dog waste uh, on many streets, including uh, Cleveland Police has been having a, a lot of issues. So if you see people not cleaning up, uh, please 
don't feel free to take a photo of them and send it right to to me or to to Ruff. Uh, we definitely want to try to stop this from happening. Um, but we're also going to be talking to the, the Ruff is going to be talking to the landlords in the areas where the issue is the issues are happening most frequently to try to prevent that from happening in the future. Um, but there are doggy waste bags around the neighborhood that you are welcome to, but just please use them carefully and don't abuse that. Um, and then just some fun things that are happening with uh, for rough events. On July 11th, there's a vet talk and ice cream in the park at 6 p.m. On July 14th, there is a doggy wash fundraiser at 9 a.m. Uh, it's $10 uh, in the park. And then uh, on July 18th, we'll have our second yappy hour event at the living room from 6 to 8 p.m. Our first one was a ton of fun, very successful. We had a lot of great dogs and great dog owners present, so we're very excited for the next one as well. And that's all I have. Great, thank you, Ashley. And uh, before we turn to the uh, 87 sale, just one last note about uh, 198 Hanover Street that Ray has asked me to do. Uh, I, I'd just like to take two seconds <coughs> Time. I personally want to thank Damien for all his hard work to get this Starbucks started, signs, posters. I mean, the guy went way out. He was on Facebook. Everybody answered. I have to give him all the credit because I honestly believed after that meeting, Starbucks understood we do not want you. I have to say thank you. Please. Done that, but thank you. Man. Appreciate it. So, um, with that said, thank you. Um, yes, can, can I yes. Say something? absolutely. Um, I'm Sarah from Montecito, and I'm with my brother Johnny, and kind of moved to this um, area. I've been outside of Boston, and I did notice that Damien was kind of leading the group. and I assume that most people did not want Starbucks um, to come, and, and I'm wondering if you know, I, if this is not a first fight, it's not going to be our last fight, and I'm wondering if we could possibly try to figure out, I know there's a lot of committees and so forth, but I'm wondering if we could possibly figure out a way to put something together so this way we have more of a uniformed um, group of people that, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure Damien, you know, saw some mistakes that he made or we made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I'm wondering if we could probably maybe just put a committee together because this, like I said, it's not going to be our last fight. Um, they are deep pockets. They want this area. They're going to build probably sky rises eventually, get rid of the whole historical aspect of it. And I think um, for one person trying to lead it, I think it's, it's, it's very hard. I think we should just have somewhat of a basis committee put together so this way when the next one comes in, we already have a game plan. Uh, I'm, thank you for bringing that up. Um, two points. One, you're right. His big mistake was not promoting the pizza festival when he had the microphone. In front of him, right? <laughs> uh, no, but to that point, we actually had some conversations prior to tonight's meeting about that specifically. Um, whether the anti the legal term is like a formula of business, and whether an ordinance might be worth pursuing. Years ago, if, for those in the room that could remember the, the donuts, uh, about circa 2003, 2004. McDonald's before that, and thank you. Um, you know, so it's it's been reoccurring for sure, um, and we talked about maybe now is the time that we actually get something in place. I know uh, major cities do have these, in, 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 you know, in effect. So it's not like something that is uh, unheard of. When San Francisco comes to mind, um, and have it limited to down to neighborhoods, um, and you know, even even here, Nantucket. I mean, you know, uh, whether that is something that could be. <coughs> You know, long term, I, I don't know, but it's certainly worth exploring, and we want to have more conversations about that because you're right. The fight, the fight, you know, the battle was against Starbucks now. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Right. And they've only, you know, suspended it. They have not withdrawn it. And you know, to be honest with you, not reinventing the wheel. I mean, like you know, we're stirring a lot of things, and the organization is not 100% there. And I just think it's a lot of work. For somebody who's very passionate, um, I think we should possibly, possibly try to figure out, you know, put all the stuff in order so this way, if this happens, that we can generate a committee right away. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will say you're right. Many hands make light work. 
Uh, there's there's a, many ways to pursue it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there certainly is a designated it's just it's not, it is a historic district. Yes. I believe Beacon Hill has a room, Charlestown has one, and I think parts of Black Bay also has one. I, I'll look into that further. I know there is historical designation, which is a little yeah. bit different than a, yep, but, outright yeah. ban. So there's yeah. there's certain things that um, they can and can't do as yeah. a historical district because they still do have Starbucks over there. You know, it yeah. just conforms to a different building code. Exactly. Right? So exactly. you know, I think that our our conversation and this again, this is something that's evolving. Uh, but I think we're more leaning towards whether uh, a chain ban and formulating what does that mean <coughs> what does it you know are there exceptions yeah. uh, for services that we might need in the area that are otherwise chains etc uh, it's, again it's in the it's in the infancy part of it right now but uh, to your, you know that's that's exactly why we're talking about it because we don't want to keep doing this uh, again and again so yes sir uh, mr. chair Mike Corey I'm here for 87 Salem Street but um, you might want to follow this Woodhull model, Dr. Yeah. Falman. Yep. They've actually barred chain stores. Right. Um, and you can just maybe mimic there. And and, and that's what that's for. No, I appreciate the comment, and uh, and I think that that's exactly right. You know, that it's been done before mm -hmm. in our backyard and and throughout the country. So yeah. I don't think it's something that we'd have to draft from scratch, and we could see how it would best fit us. And we need folks to provide feedback as to what would work best. Um, so, did you want to say something there? Yeah, I think uh, I think one, we, we are going towards that. Um, whatever we can do to protect the historic aspect of this neighborhood, the culture. I mean, this is the first residential community. They say in Boston, but I mean, it was the first residential community in Boston in 1630, whatever. It might have been the first residential community in the country, as far as we know. Jamestown. Jamestown? Okay, so the second mm -hmm. home. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't have coffee. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then when we, we're going to start putting this together, and then we're going to reach out to everyone, residents, other business owners, to join so that it is a big committee and that we're all together on this. So, I mean, anyone wants to help out, please feel free to contact us via email or personally. <coughs> To get on board to help us do our research and to formulate this in the right way. Right, and there and there is a sheet going around if you want to fill out your name and and email so that we can contact you. But uh, again, uh, we're we're right along with you, and it's it's in the early <coughs> stages, but we're, we're hoping that something can come of that. And and of course, we would talk to you know city officials and elected to see how best to make it so that everybody benefits. 